Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? I'm in the quiet car today. So I thought I'd record a video. Actually, the other car, by the time I record another video, the other car might be the quiet car because uh, that noisy wheel bearing is going to go and get fixed. Uh, I think it's going in on Monday. Today's Friday. <clears throat> so, expect some expense. But, uh, be nice to get it sorted out. It's going to be serviced and MOT'd. I've taken it to a proper Peugeot garage this time. I normally take it to a little guy up the road who's like a Renault, specialises in Renaults, but I don't think he's, he's Renault approved. But he's the guy who uh, serviced my scooter and then gave it to me with the front wheel falling off. So there we go. Past the, past the paper shop. No papers today. Got three patients coming in, and so they won't need papers. So I uh, don't. I didn't work yesterday, Thursday, and that's because uh, the uh, we normally get their grandchildren to babysit on a Thursday, and so it's my chance really to get a chance to have a day with them. You know which is nice they're with their parents at the weekend and uh, we don't really want to disturb the parents chance to have a bit of me time with the kids so um, we tend to get to enjoy them during the week so and funnily enough having a day a week off is not a big deal I mean it means you have to sort of just squidge all the other patients up don't you in fact I could probably have two days a week off if I wanted but uh, one day is, I would think, would be fine. I mean, you know, I don't work that hard. <laughs> Bearing in mind, I, I, you know, I have Friday afternoon off. I uh, have now started having Thursdays off, and if uh, we haven't got enough patients, I have Monday off as well. So, I yesterday though, I mean, you know, I didn't see any patients, but I was at work all day. I was working on the accounts. And we've had a major screw up with the accounts. That's the only way I can call. I mean, learn a lot. You know, that's, when you have a screw up, that's the only way you can look at it, isn't it? As a learning experience. Um, my accountant, UNW, suggested that I go to the online version of QuickBooks as opposed to the PC-based desktop version of QuickBooks. And uh, the, sort of the recommendation was made in good faith because they are, you know, they're trying to tell people that this quarterly accounting is coming and we're going to have to do quarterly accounts instead of annual accounts. Which I think is a bridge too far. I don't think the government will push it that through. I don't think, honestly, I don't think, you know, they're, they're going <laughs> to, the information they get from quarterly accounts is really not going to be worth that much. And it's all a, it's just a massive um, attempt, they're desperate, they're desperately short of money, the government, it's running, they run at a loss every year, and they've just about put up every tax they can say, you know, every tax they've got is, is just about maxed out, and they've introduced all sorts of new taxes, they've got the sugar, tax on sugar now, and that's, you know, I mean, by the time you start taxing sugar, you're really scraping the barrel, so... Um, what they want to do is try and bring the uh, tax revenue in faster. So um, they went, uh, well, many years ago now, probably 20, possibly even 30 years ago now, they went from a system of paying like a, a year in arrears so that you finish your financial year and then you knew how much tax you had to pay and then you paid it. And now you have to guesstimate how much tax that you're due to pay in that year in the current year and then pay it in the current year and then if you're wrong then you have to make a balance of payment. So they bought the whole, you know, everybody's tax forward a year they got the benefit of uh, two years taxation in one year. And now what they're trying to do is they're trying to go to quarterly taxation which means that they're not going to even let you wait, well, they don't even let you wait a year. They're not even going to let you not wait a year now, they're going to they're gonna want tax every quarter. So, uh, you know. The whole thing is going to come tumbling down sooner or later. 
I don't think they realised the but that's what I've realised about doing my accounts is that I mean I used to be able to handle my accounts quite easily by which I mean that you know when I sent them off to the accountant I used to make be able to make some sort of sense of there used to be some sort of link between what I knew about the accounts and what I'd sent them and what they sent me back now I can't you know although I sign a thing to say that yeah their accounts are brilliant and uh, you know perfect um, I haven't got a clue how they how they, they they don't show me the workings they just send me the accounts so and I sign it because what are you gonna do you know you can't not sign it so um, Anyway, they said go online, and to be cut a long story short, it's been an unmitigated disaster. It's Creep Books Online is is a horrendous, horrendous program. It's just it's designed by an idiot. I can only assume by for other idiots, um, and it's caused us. Uh, to give you an idea, of the sort of problems it's caused um, because it's online. You can't say like save save these this state of my accounts. Back it up, you know. And then, because uh, I'm going to do something now, and if I do it back to front or I get it wrong, I just want to go back to where I am now. You can't do that. So, so basically, if your accounts are screwed up and you're trying to unscrew them, you can screw them up more. Uh, and then you've got a double screw up to unscrew. Um, and then uh, the other thing was that uh, they tell you to use your... Um, your existing employer number, you know, your employer's reference number, payroll number. And uh, they don't, uh, they, they say that do that, otherwise you'll end up, you know, creating another employer. But uh, the Inland Revenue or QuickBooks or someone are so, are so dumb that you always end up creating another employer. They just do it by default. They think, hello, is another business, come online, you know, making automatic returns to the Inland Revenue and let's give him a new employer number. And so, uh, first thing I knew about this was when my, all my employees got notices saying that, can you please put these employees on, on basic tax? You know, can they put them on the, uh, the emergency tax code. And I know that's because they, you know, I've sent them off and I've sort of, I, I've used the existing tax code number, which I know that is their proper number, and the tax, the tax people have been like, whoa, 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 you're a new employer, you don't get to make these numbers up. We tell you these numbers, you use the emergency code until we tell you to use our something else. And so I'm not, you know, I'm not going to put them on emergency tax code. It's just, it's unfair on them. Uh, it's stupid and it's the wrong thing to do. So, constable. Oh, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, I mean, you can uh, authorise uh, QuickBooks to, to download your bank account transactions directly. Um, and... Um, but most people have got two bank accounts, haven't they? They've got like a, a current account and then possibly a loan account or something or a deposit account or number two of a reserve account or something. And they say, don't worry, we'll just print the form off. We'll print the form off, you sign it and send it off to your bank. So I'd done that and I did that. And uh, what I didn't notice was that they only did it for one account. They didn't do it for all of the accounts. So uh, what's happened is I've got a situation where I can now got authority. They, QuickBooks has got authority to download the transactions from one of my accounts, but not, not the other one. And because it's got this authority, it's not asking me to authorize for the other one. So it's, you know, so the, uh, from that point onwards, the, um, the, uh, the QuickBooks online accounts and my bank accounts just started diverging. And they, you know, the, the, and they also there's a two week gap between the last time you downloaded the accounts and when when it starts downloading automatically. So they say, no, you've got to you've got to download these yourself and upload them manually. And uh, it, it's it's a complete cluster, you know what? So I won't bore you with all the. I mean, that is like that's only a representative. That's just three problems. There there are probably twelve problems, and I, they're just the three that just sprang to mind first of all. So my tip is uh, QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Pro, which I you know, used to complain and pay about £60 a month for it, and I used to complain and think it was a real rip-off. 
I have now got a newfound respect for that program because I sat down yesterday and I started to and I and I had to take it from when we went online, which was in May, and bring bring up the bring that old you know the latest version of the offline accounts, bring them right up to date, and that involved retyping two months worth of uh, bank transactions in basically and allocating it all and. But of course I'm very familiar with the program, so it took the best part of a day, but uh, for finally, finally, I know where I am. Finally I can get some management accounts out. Finally I know what the supplier balances are. It's just, uh, it's just been a nightmare. So, and I don't, you know, I'm annoyed about UNW. I don't hold it against them because as I say I think their advice was given in good faith but but the thing is you know if you do something that costs them a day's worth of work they're gonna charge you for it and yet if they give you some duff advice which costs you a day's worth of work they, you can't take it off their bill you know they're um they're they're just keeping up with a proud tradition amongst dental accountants and probably most accountants of taking your figures which you've where you've done all the hard work and putting them in a different format and sending them off to the Inland Revenue like a translator you know like uh, like you live like you live in Italy and you've got a document you need to submit so you go to a guy who says yeah I'll, I'll translate that into Italian and send it off to the Italian the Italian authorities so, that's what they do but I don't. I've always complained about this that they're not. They're not at all proactive. They don't really know. They're, they're, they feel like a lot of doctors and dentists. You know, they feel this real obligation to be able to give you advice. So when people want advice. What people want advice is about uh, how to minimise their tax, how to arrange their affairs. You know, how to structure their company. And they do. You know, to a certain extent, they'll say, "Oh yeah, you'll set up a limited company or whatever," and then. But then really, you know, they don't, uh, I don't know whether if you pay them more, you get more, but they, they offer me a flat rate deal for about £2,000 a year, which I think is, is, is not, is not, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to end up paying them more than £2,000, let's just put it that way, That's it. Their, their flat rate deal is not very flat, it's got hills in it, it's got hills, quite tall hills, uh, and uh, small mountain ranges. So anyway, the, um, but the point is that the uh, surgery, I think, we're, what with making the receptionist job redundant and obviously coming back off holiday and doing a bit of work, he's uh, now, now okay, he's now ticking over okay. I think I can honestly say we've got over the worst of it. We've got enough money to pay the bills, you know, the rent and the uh, loan without uh, having to put any money into the business and uh, possibly even being able to take a bit out. So happy days and today's going to be the hottest day of the year or it's forecasted to, they, or it's predicted it could possibly be the hottest day of the year or the hottest day of all time the hottest day of all time that's the whole point since records began so uh, I'm pleased that it's a Friday and I'm only working in the morning so then I can I can knock off lunchtime and uh, participate in the old uh, bathing in the sun so I've got three patients today I've got uh, two new patients I've done I'm advertising now on uh, I've got a mixed media campaign on Kent KMFM radio advert uh, Planet Extra magazine uh, newspaper which is weekly and uh, quarter page on page two and lastly uh, online advertising now I've got to tell you I don't expect anything from the online advertising because everyone uses uBlock Origin ad blocker now so I went to the website you know they said <laughs> 
I said to them, can I see my adverts, you know, like up on a test site? So they put my adverts up on a test site and they sent me the link to it and I went there and I couldn't see them because I blocked them. So if I block them, I can't blame anyone else for blocking them. So, but you know, but it's possible the sort of patients that we want, the sort of the 50-55 group that, you know, is our staple demographic for private dentistry may be slightly too old to be running ad blockers. I'm, I'm rather hoping that's the case. But, you know, okay, so I'm not expecting anything from the online. The, um, the radio, I'm not expecting anything from the radio because they have, they have probably done me the second most appalling advert ever. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I only say that because their first attempt was the most appalling advert ever. And uh, this is the, radio advertising is is very difficult to do well and very expensive to do well. And I knew what sort of budget they were on when they when I you know I said I didn't like it and I'd like it re-recorded. And they said, well, but that's you know we're going to have to ne that we'll do it once for you for nothing. But the next time we're going to have to charge you fifty quid. And I'm like, really, fifty quid? Is that all you're paying? <laughs> so. Your KMFM is quite a high energy radio station, you know, it's, it's uh, like all local pop music stations, it's, uh, it's all very sort of full of sound effects and whizzing stereo and very quick, everything's, uh, everything's optimised and normalised and uh, every, everything has every bit of uh, white space taken out so that it's really right you know very intense and my adverts up against everybody i mean everybody all the national advertisers you know the local the big the big theme parks locally uh the big um you know department of social services advertising what to do if your benefit changes all these guys the the uh you know b and q bank holiday weekend adverts and um you know, and I've got this little advert saying, you know, I go to Derek Watson because he's a good dentist and blah, blah, blah. So, so it is incredibly amateur. And the trouble is, um, you know, if you're, and I can only say this because I've done, I've done a bit of, or quite a bit of work with podcasting and sound and stuff like that. And so I do know a little bit about sound, which is disconcerting for them because they don't expect a dentist really to be a sound engineer or to know, you know, to, to be able to talk to a sound engineer. And uh, literally when they sent me the first advert, I remixed it and sent it back. And I'd managed to get my advert, my, my phone number in twice in slightly less time than they'd used because it was, their one was just too flabby. Anyway, um, the, if you want like a real, you know, good advert, you're gonna have to hire some sort of creative agency. Uh, preferably that specializes in radio and you're gonna have to pay a few hundred or possibly a few thousand pounds to get this advert uh, done um, and my package is 780 quid a month so that's about eight thousand nine thousand pound a year and you could just spend that on the radio advertising alone I mean it's good in a way but it's it's a bit like you know they say oh we've got this marvelous package you know we, 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 we're um, multimedia you know we're doing it in print we're doing it on the web and we're doing it on the radio and it includes the radio productions included and you think oh that's fantastic and then you find out that the radio production is being done by the equivalent of somebody's somebody's cousin with their MS paint so anyway we're placing all the faith in the um, in the print ad so um, and the print ad I am I am pretty happy with I think that that is you know and again for having produced a magazine for so many years you know I've got I've got several years experience in in producing and editing um, um, a, a, a 32 page magazine color mag, full color magazine so I know a bit about print as well and the print uh, advert I'm pretty happy with so 
I will just have to see. It's got to bring in 700 quid a, 780 quid a month. So we'll see whether it does. <clears throat> if it does, I'll carry on with it because I think it's the sort of thing that you, you can establish your presence, you know, and then and then build on it. Right, I'm at work. I've got a patient during 15 minutes. So it's been nice talking to you. I hope you have a lovely hot day <clears throat> and I'll talk to you later. Bye.